Welcome to Manna from Heaven with Sharon Gaines Lee. God says to us in Philippians 4.19 that he would supply all of our needs according to his riches from heaven. Aren't you ready to eat? I am. Everything we need pertaining to life and godliness is wrapped up in our relationship with Christ Jesus. And he supplied everything we need to live this life. So come join me. Let's have a conversation and eat together. Hurry up. Don't miss out. Come on. Come on. Welcome to Kingdom Purpose TV with your girl, Sharon Gaines Lee. I'm excited that you are here, that you're joining me. And thank you for the followers that are following me, not just for me, but it lets me it lets me know that you are aware of the fact, fact that God wants to give us manna from heaven and he's constantly feeding us. He's constantly giving to us daily his word because he wants us to grow as much as we want to grow. And so today we're talking, this is part one. And on my podcast, I'm also talking about commanding your morning because it is so important for us to be in control of our day or giving that control back to God as opposed to it just flowing around and what will be will be. And so today, this is part one of um, of Manna with Sharon on commanding our day. And this actually started off, um, a, a lot of people know about Cindy Trim and how she commands her day. And I love that. I heard that a few years ago and I just took it and ran with it. And it was so, so dynamic and so good. And so but what brought it back to my attention to teach on it was um, this week I was speaking with my niece on the phone and she got a new job and, and she was on her way to work. And before she went in, she was a little jittery, which is expected for a new job to have, you know, have feelings of being jittery. And so she said, as she said, um, auntie, she said before she said, I hope it's a good day in there. I hope everything goes okay. And something just sparked up on the inside of me. And it was like, no, that is not how we're going to do it. And so I began to text her and I began to say her, to say, it came out of my mouth and I said to her, no, you have to command your day. You have to demand what command and demand what your day will be. You're not going to just wait to see what happens and then say it was a good day or a bad day. You command be, because God has given you authority to command the day. And so does that mean nothing's going to go wrong in that day when you command it? No. But you're setting that anchor down. You're setting that anchor down where things, where, where you can pull strongholds down and say, ah, 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 ah. No, this is how things are going to go. And so, and, and being aware of that, aligning yourself first with God, and you're allowing God to go into your workplace or to your home, whatever you need to command. Um, command. You may need to command your finances, your marriage, your children, your home, whatever it is, God has given us authority. And some of you may remember um, the account about Ezekiel and how God told him to speak to those dry bones. I mean, Ezekiel wasn't sitting down reading a book about um, dry bones or, you know, reading an account of, about somebody before him who had dry bones. Now, I'm not making light of the fact of us reading the word because that's where we're gonna get our commands from. We're not pulling commands out the sky. We're not pulling them out of the back of our head. You know, we're not doing that. We're taking them from the word, but we're taking them from the word and we are utilizing them. We are making them work for us. We are commanding them because God said he, God says he has put life and death in our mouth. So we have to speak that life. We just can't wait and see what's going to happen on the stage in human history. We have to command according to the word of God what's going to take place. So I said to my niece and she texted me back later. She said, I did that, auntie. You know, she did. And that was good because that's that was a small, small thing. Well, we have to do that in every facet of our life. Whatever you're going through, you know, if God has allowed you to go through it, he has given you authority to dominate it in the name of Jesus, taking the word and dominate it. So I, uh, upon that, me giving you that introduction, I want you to have in your mind that is no longer whatever will be, will be. Hey, Sarah, Sarah, that was good for Doris Day to sing, but it's not good for us to live out. We have to command and set in motion what we want to take place. Otherwise, we'll just allow the devil to just, just do whatever he wants in our life. And we don't want that. So the word command means um, teshuva. That's the Hebrew word um, teshuva. 
And um, and I'm saying it correctly this time because I looked it up. I did my homework, did what I was supposed to do. So it is teshuva, and it's that's the Hebrew word for it. And it is in the Bible 494 times. That's important. That's important. God didn't put it in there one time. He put it in there all close to 500 times because he wanted us to get this to command our day. I mean, the earth, the um, the earth was um was put in place by um God commanding. God commanded, he commanded the sun to be in place. He commanded um the earth, he commanded the salt stars, the moon, he commanded. And so as he is, so are we. He's our template. He's our example of what we're supposed to do. And so the word command means to appoint, to send a messenger, to give charge or a command, walking in greater authority. So when we're, when we're commanding, we're, command, we're also commanding ourselves to move up, to step up and to lean into greater authority. We're not just letting things happen and then we're upset because same things happen. We are stepping up and we're saying, you know, we're stepping up and we're leaning in to God's word into that greater authority. We're walking into greater authority. So commanding your morning is a simple yet powerful technique, a spiritual technique that will allow you to walk in greater authority over your day. Do you want to walk in greater authority over your day? Then you have to take the reins and you have to command what will take place. So you say, well, I tried that and it didn't happen the first time. It didn't happen the second time. It didn't happen the third time. So what? When you eat, do you eat the first one time? Do you eat two times? Do you eat three times? No, you eat every day to feed yourself and to strengthen yourself. So you have to take this thing on. You have to take on God's word, take on his word and wear it and work it and work it until you begin to see manifestations in your life, manifestations. But you have to work together with God in this. You have to work together. It's not always automatic. Sometimes it may be. I can't say it will never be automatic, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes you have to work it and work it and work it until it works for you. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to learn how to command our day. And so it's not just about praying specific prayers. It's actually speaking and prophesying over your life. It's speaking and prophesying over your life. Remember I said uh, in the beginning of this, that's what Ezekiel did. He, he began to speak and he prophesied to those dry bones. He didn't just go there and look at the bones and think about the bones. Oh, it would be nice if these bones got up and moved. Oh, these, the, it's a lot of these bones. He didn't do stupid stuff like that. He began to, he did exactly what God instructed him to do. And we have to do what God instructs us to do. He aligned himself with God's words and we have to align ourselves with God's word. We just can't think, you know, well, things are going on in our life. There are bad things that are taking place and we just lay down and take it. No, this is not the season for that. It is absolutely not the season for that, especially for believers, because God said he has put life and death in the power of our tongue, and we can utilize it or not. It's optional. So if you want things to change and shift in your life, or if you want to intensify what your he you does know, the things of God in your life, you have to use this thing. You have to use this mouth. You have to command things to happen because we frame our life by what we say. And so in that frame, and there's a frame behind me as I'm glancing over that, I say there's a big frame behind me, but there's a frame behind me. What, what, what we put in that frame is important. So don't be shocked because you're letting everything just flow out of your mouth and it's just, you know, one day up, one day down, not, no, not concerned about repenting and getting things aligned correctly. You're just letting be whatever will be. Well, I specifically chose that photo behind me. I chose it and I actually put it together to put in that frame. It's called the Trump Lloyd and it looks like you can walk through it a little bit if you see it. But I specifically chose what I wanted to put in that frame. I didn't want a big tree in that frame. I wanted just what I had, that picture, that picture from Italy. I wanted that picture in it. And so I specifically chose, like you can specifically chose the direction of your life by using this thing by using your mouth. You can command your morning. You can command your morning. We're going to start with that, but you can command your evening. You can command. What do you need changed in your life? What needs to align itself with the word of God? Do your children, 
Do your finances, do your marriage, what needs to take place? We have to align ourselves with what God says in order, in order for things to get on track. God literally command the morning to be put in place in order for his love, loving kindness to take place and to be, and to be in full display. He commanded it. If God commanded it, we have to command it. We're not doing something opposite from what God did or what he does. We're working together with him. We're joining in with what he is doing in this place. And how do we join in? We join in with our mouth. So that's why we have to be careful the seeds we plant, because what we plant is what we will eventually harvest. And so if you want to harvest crap, keep speaking crap. Keep commanding crap to take place in your life. If that's not what you want, then you need to throw those, those wicked seeds out. Get rid of them. Don't feed those seeds. You don't want to nourish those. You don't want to give those seeds miracle, miracle growth. You want to give the miracle growth to the things that, um, that align with the word of God and that will change your, li your life and the lives around you. Yes, that's what you want. And so we are told, we are told in the word in John 14, 12, and you can jot this down if you want, or you can go to um, my YouTube channel and you can listen to this and you can take notes. It, it's your option. But most assuredly, it says in John 14, 12, most assuredly, I say to you <laughs> that he who believes in the works that I do, if you believe in the works that I do, God says, believe th that greater works you do. The works that Jesus did when he was here on the earth, and they were very, they were dynamic works. And Jesus says to us, in greater works that we'll do. And that says that in John 14, 12, greater works. And he did some dynamite things. Jesus is telling us, we will do what he has done. Listen to that. We will do, you and I will do what he has already done. And he's saying, at least we'll do that. That's like the minimum we'll do. He said, and greater will we do. Greater. That doesn't just like poof, and, it, and it's there. He has to entrust his word, his power to us. Yes, you don't take and give a, a Z28 to a 13-year-old child and say, go to the store. I mean, you don't give a fast car like that to somebody who's immature. And so God loves us just that much or even more. He wants to give us what he can entrust to us. And so God giving us his power and saying, you know, we, we will do greater things in him. That means there's some work that has to be done because he wants his, his works displayed on the earth. And guess who he's using? He's using you and he's using me. I'm telling you, I've seen some dynamic things take place and some dynamic manifestations in my lifetime, in my short period of time here on this earth. I've seen some dynamic things and that's not enough. Jesus said greater, greater, greater. So I'm going in for the greater. I'm going in. I'm going in for the greater. Are you going to go in for the greater? So that means we have to align ourselves with God's word and do it the way God wants us to do it. We can look at it. We can just look at it. We can stare at it and say, oh, that's nice. He, he promised that. That's really nice. We can look at it in somebody else's life and say, oh, that's really nice. Look what, they, look what they're, they're doing. And we can just be in awe with what they're doing. But God doesn't just want it to stay there. That can encourage us to want more, but God wants to flow through us and he wants to use us, not just for us, but for the community that God has put around us. So are you ready for this? Are you ready to command your morning? And these are some of the things, these are some of the um, things that took place on the stage in history that Jesus did. And he said, greater things will do greater things than this. And in, um, you'll remember this in Luke 8, chapter 8, verse 1 through 4. Jesus spoke to the leopard saying, be cleansed. And guess what? He was cleansed. Jesus spoke to the leopard and said, be cleansed. And he was cleansed. That took place on this stage in history, on this planet. That took place. And Jesus said, greater things we shall do. So if you're in awe and say he spoke and the leopard was immediately cleansed, yes, that's what took place. And Jesus said, at least that should take place when we speak at least. And he said, and greater things will take place than that. And then we find in Luke 8, 
5 through 13, the centurion man asked Jesus to simply speak the word. Just speak the word and his servant would be healed. Just speak. So he was in one place. Jesus was in one place and his servant was in another place. But this centurion heard something. He, he, he saw the power of God. So he saw that all he had to do was speak. I mean, Jesus, of course, laid hands on some people. And there's a time to lay hands on people. But there's a time that because there was distance and because of his faith, because he said, I don't need you to go. I just need you to speak. And he spoke. What about the woman with the issue of blood? All she did was touch the hem of his garment. She just knew just that touch would revolutionize and change her life. It's time for us to bump it up, bump it up. We just can't have quiet time. What, what, what did you do today? Did you have time with the Lord? Yes, I had quiet time. Yeah, that quiet time is enough for you to read the word, read the word, because we need the word that we're going to use in order to command our day. We need that. But that's the first part. The second part is we have to utilize that. We have to work together with that. We can't just read it and then close our Bible and then we're off. We have to work together with it because it's applied word that's instrumental in our life and, and it produces um, fruit. The applied word is not just the word that you read and you close your Bible and you walk away just so you, you can say you had time with the Lord, you had a quiet time with the Lord. No, it's not for that. We have to apply that word. We have to eat that word like it's manna. We have to eat it. We have to chew it. We have to work it. We have to work together with it because the word is alive. It's not just a novel that you're reading. It's, it's, it's an, a live word that we have to apply. We have to eat it. We have to talk about it. We have to speak about it. We have to work together with God in it. If you want to go to that next level, this is how you do it. And so that's how we do it. And in Job 22, 28, you can jot that down again, or you can go to the YouTube channel. But there was um, a man in Job's life at the time, and I hope I'm saying his name right. I'm, I, I'm not going to even try, but there was a man, and you can go to that in Job 22, 28. But um, he, <laughs> you will also declare a thing, declare a thing, and it will be established for you. So light will shine in, in, in your way. You want light to shine in your way, then you can declare a thing. And this man, this um, man of God, this man of God in Job 22, 28, Job needed a line. He said to Job, he said, don't say this and go to it and read it because it's really good. He said, don't say this, but now you need to say this, Job. And he told Job what to say. And so essentially that's repentance. That's repentance. He said, Job, you need to say this. He said, this is what you need to align yourself with. And so Job said it. And then God, the power of God came upon Job because obedience is initial. That's, that's what leads to procession. And then the anointing comes. Once we align ourselves with God and we're in that set, set stage of repentance, of doing whatever God wants us to do, whatever God wants us to do, not whatever you want to do, whatever God wants us to do, because God is not going to give you and I more than we can bear. He's going to give us what he needs. And we're on this earth to join in with what God is doing. We are joining in with what God is doing. And God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things shall be added. So we're seeking first the kingdom of God. We're seeking God's will. Sometimes we get that twisted a little, little bit because God says, ask whatever you want according to my will and I will do it. And so we think that means, okay, I'm going to ask for um, a Mercedes. I'm going to ask for a 10,000 square foot house. Now those things might be a part of your life or they may not be. But the thing is, those thing, things will never empower you. Those things will never equip you. Those things will never heal you. Those things actually will fade away and they will rust. And so we, we want to align ourselves to something that's eternal. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, I will continue because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I command in the name of Jesus, that health is mine, healing is mine, and this cough is not. So let's continue here. I have to practice what I preach. So we are commanding our day. We are commanding, we are aligning ourselves 
with what God says. And we are doing what God says. And there's something else I want to say before I end this. And the word, this is so, this is so dynamic. And I learned this a few years ago, but the Holy Spirit reminded me of this this morning. And it's an Arama Aramaic word that's, that's called, and we hear it so many, so many times with magic. But it's an Aramaic word, and the word is abracadabra. So disassociate it in your mind with magic. Um, abracadabra means I create what I speak. It's an Aramaic word that says I create what I speak. So what are you creating with your mouth? What are you creating with your mouth? Because sometimes we say things that we think, oh, it's no problem. We'll say little things like, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, or I'm so stupid, or I always, I always had a problem with anger. Anger was in my family. My mother was angry. My father was angry. Their parents were angry. And so that's just my lot in life. We have to be careful with those stupid things that we say. I'm not calling you stupid, but those things are stupid. We have to align ourselves because God watches over his word to perform his word in us. Listen to me. He watches over his word to perform his word in you and in me. And so what do we want to be magnified? What seeds are we planting? What, what seeds are we planting? What, what, what are we giving miracle grow to? What are we getting? Because with our mouth, we are causing something to grow. We're putting miracle grow on something. So do we want to put miracle grow on, um, I'm stupid? Do we want that to grow? Do we want to put miracle grow on, I have an anger problem, so we want to intensify that anger? Is that what we want? Or do we want to put words on, I am healed. I am, I am healed because it says in Isaiah 53 that by the stripes of Jesus, by the, his stripes, I am healed. Do we want that to grow? Those are the kind of things that we want to grow. As he is, so are we in this place. So let's use our tongue to command our morning. And you can go through the scriptures. Just have time in the word. Do so. Please do that. Have your quiet time. But don't just stop there. You have to use your mouth to work together with God. Use your mouth to work together with God. Because as God watches over his word to perform it, so does Satan. And so those things that you say, I'm stupid, I have anger problems, I don't like her, I hate her, you know, all of these things we're saying, Satan is watching over those words so he can perform them. So we don't want those things going out in the atmosphere. We don't want to frame those things. We want to frame what God says, because we will have a harvest, we will reap a harvest. What will your harvest be? What will you begin to reap? Be careful what you say out of, out of your mouth. Be careful. Don't just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. If you listen to people who talk and talk and talk and talk, and then in one minute they're saying something good out of their mouth, and then the next minute they're chewing it up, you have to say, be aware of the fact either not to be around that person so much or gently correct, you know, change the direction of what they're saying. But you need to for sure change the direction of what you're saying because we are a combination of what we have spoken what we've spoke and what we believe. My life right now is a combination of what I believe and what I say. All of us are going to go through trials. All of us are going to have tribulations. We're all going to have that. That doesn't mean I'm in sin because I'm having a trial. That does not, that does not mean that you're in sin. I'm sorry, I'm just checking the clock, checking, checking my time. And it doesn't mean you're in sin or I'm in sin because trials and different things come up. But God says that we're overcomers. So, so that means we have to overcome something. You're not overcoming junk rope. You're not overcoming eating an apple. Unless you couldn't eat apples before you couldn't eat or you didn't have teeth and now you do. I mean, that may be an overcoming situation, but you know what I mean. We, we are overcomers. And in order to overcome and to keep overcoming, we have to align this mouth with what God says. It's going to take some practice, especially if you're out of control with it, especially if you don't like change, like most people don't like change. You don't like change. You do like change because you know what? You want things to be better. Don't you? Some people don't because Jesus, when he was here, when he, when he walked on the earth, he would ask people specifically, what do you want from me? So we can't presume every, that everybody, so I'll take that back. We can't presume that everybody wants the good life. 
in Jesus. Everybody wants to be healed. Everybody wants to be whole. Everybody wants to be prosperous. I, we can't, I can't, I can't um, make, make pretend that everybody wants that, but I do. And if you're here with me and you stayed on, that means you do. So that means we have to command our morning. We have to take the word, word of God and we have to put that word in our mouth and we have to do what Ezekiel did to those dry bones. We have to speak to it and command it to do something. We have to speak to it and we have to command it to do something because we are practicing something in our lives. We're either practicing not doing it or we are practicing doing it, but you're not in between. You are or you are not. There is no lukewarm. God said there is no lukewarm. He said that I'll spit out of my mouth, my mouth, either be hot or cold. So what are you going to be today? Are you going to be hot concerning commanding your day so that your life can shift and you can step up and lean into God's promises and you can see the manifestation of those promises? Or are you going to say, oh, I'm just going to wait and see what happens? What are you going to do? be hot or cold, but at least know that if you're cold, that you are cold. You are cold and nothing's happening because you're cold. So, but at least you know why. But don't stay in the middle because there is no middle. Well, I'm doing it sometimes. Well, I'm tired of doing it. And I'm back and forth. And then you don't see anything happening. And then you want to blame God for that. Well, he didn't lie to you. He, he said, be hot or cold. <laughs> And so it is better to be hot or cold so you have a definitive line of where you are. But join in with me. Join in with me in commanding our morning, commanding our day. And, and you know what? You can even write it down because God says he watches over his word to perform his word. So your decrees and the things that you want to decree and command, write them down. Write some of them down because God watches over his word to perform his word. And if he sees that you are serious about certain things, God watches over it and he will perform it in your life. I promise you that. So let's grow in this together. Let's grow and let's go ahead, have more than we had yesterday or more than we had last year this time or two years from this time. Let's manifest things in our life. And how, how do we have manifestations in our life? by commanding our morning, commanding our day, aligning our mouth with God. I love you and have a fun time commanding your day, commanding your week until we meet again. Sharon Gainsley on <clears throat> Manna from Heaven. Eat, eat, eat. Bye, see you next week. <laughs>